Why, hello and welcome to another episode of the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez, every Monday through Friday on the GSMC Sports Network. Could have talked about everything in terms of professional wrestling. Uh, from AEW to WWE, we talk about it here. From makes major news headlines in terms of WWE, we talk about it here on the show. And uh, just, you know, not just WWE, AEW, sorry, I lied. Today's Wednesday. Hope you guys had a great hump day. Guys, don't get too crazy. My mom always referred to this day as hump day. You know, you're kind of, you know, getting up to the getting up to the hump in terms of, you know, the, the week. We got, you know, football Thursday. We got Friday football. We have Sunday football. Monday football. It's a good. It's all going to make it worth uh, worth your while. Uh, we have AEW's All Out pay per view that's going to happen as well uh, over the weekend on Saturday. Wise choice. Wise choice. You didn't decide to go up against the NFL on Sunday. So maybe that might be you know kind of a consistent trend that you probably see all elite wrestling and Tony Khan kind of move toward. Uh, but uh, yeah, thank you so much for tuning into the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez. And on tap to you today, this show, we have our WWE NXT review. We have our AEW Dynamite preview. We're also going to talk about Swerve Strickland's new contract in AEW and how WWE re- negatively reacted to it. Basically, you know, kind of criticizing Tony Khan for making, um, you know, kind of making superstars kind of push what they're worth. And, you know, I'm, I'm not. That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. Obviously, you know, these guys they travel 365 days a year, probably more than any other professional sports athlete in, uh, you know, in the world. So, you know, I, you know, maybe it's a good thing. I, I you know, honestly, I I probably say it is a good thing. Tony Khan knows how to take care of its superstars. Obviously, WWE's kind of always been in that, you know, like what do we really have to say? What do we really have to do to kind of push the envelope? How can we get this superstar, you know, at, at minimal cost? And you know, as well. And that's just that's just business. That's just business. You know, nothing really to frown upon, but I don't know. I just thought that was interesting overall how WWE Kind of was hating on AEW how they signed for Strickland to that big contract. In our our fourth segment, we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan has signed a new deal with WWE. Is it good? Is it bad? We talk about it on the fourth segment, so make sure you stay tuned for that. And then our fifth and final segment, something we do every Wednesday. I give you guys my Wednesdays weekly wrestling news. I talk about all the major breaking news headlines in terms of professional wrestling. So yeah, let's go ahead and dig on into it. But of course, before we do any of that, I want to remind you guys to go ahead and, and go ahead and uh, you know hit up that super chat. But if you got a burning question or just uh, you know something that you've been dying to get off your chest here at the uh, here at the GSMC Sports Network, we we are all ears a thousand and ten percent. You know, so make sure you guys become part of the show. Make sure your voice is heard. Your voice is definitely treasured, and it is part of the mix. So don't be shy. Drop your thoughts inside the chat. And if you really want to, if you really want to make sure your comment or question gets noticed, why not use that super chat? Just hit that dollar sign below the chat box. It keeps uh, you know the lights on in terms of you know keeping all the sports content in terms of the GSMC Sports Network going, so you can get more of your awesome uh, free sports content. And um, you know we are absolutely so grateful for each and every one of you guys, a thousand and ten percent who joins us here daily. Your support makes all the difference. So let's uh, you know keep the party going. Let's make sure we stay together, and together we will make sure this podcast is bigger, better, and stronger than ever. Hit up that super chat, hit up those super stickers because you guys are super awesome, thousand and ten percent. And once and you know, once again, if the if the super chat thing is not your thing, we are still at the uh, gsmcpodcast.net. Hit up the tips and donations link. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. You know, give me some. Uh, you know, give me some feedback. Your feedback is a gift, thousand and ten percent. Here at the GSMC Sports Network. We do love a lot of peace, love, and positivity. But overall, you know, if you have something to say, say it. You know, that's what this podcast is ultimately designed for. Remember to Superman punch that like and subscribe button to the show. Follow the show. Follow the network. And I guarantee you, you will uh, you will be happy. You will be happy. All right. So we have our WWE NXT review. We have Trick Williams calling out Pete Dunne at the start of the show. Ethan Page obviously came out. He successfully retained his title. At a at uh you know at NXT's um of no mercy, which was you know, it was all right. You know, although Trick Williams kind of got screwed over with his title match, Ethan Page rubbed it in his face saying that, you know, I defended my title twice successfully. Probably, you know, Joe Hendry, top TNA guy, definitely is a force to be reckoned with. That was a that was a good win, but of course, you know, there was uh, smoke and mirrors and 
the, you know, the, the waters were muddied a little bit. But then he faced Oral Mensa. That's, you know, I'm not trying to hate on Oral Mensa, but overall, no, it's not that impressive, dog. Like, come on, dude. Trick Williams had to face you, Sean Spears, Javon Evans, in a Fatal 4-Way match at NXT Heat Wave and was unsuccessful. Kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Trick Williams is right now on the outside looking in in terms of the NXT world title uh, predicament. Uh, next, we see the Rascals in a three-way triple threat match to, determ to, de to determine the number one contender for the, the, the NXT tag team titles. You had Gallus, you had Hank and Tank, and uh, overall, the match, um, it was perfect. I give it a five stars, five out of five. You know, you saw the Rascals kind of do what they do. You saw the, you see the reasons why, you know, they are here to stay on NXT. TNA is, uh, you know, definitely... You know, on the I feel like TNA is on the cusp of starting to benefit from what NXT has to offer. Uh, you know, we've seen Charlie Dempsey go over there, Riley Osborne. We've seen, um, you know, uh, Kendrick Kendrick Bourne. No, 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 I don't think here could be misspoke speaking. Uh, we, you know, I want to see Chase Hugo over there. That'd be pretty badass. I want to see Moose come over to fight Oba Femi. That'd be dope. Um, you had, um, you know, in the women's division, Izzy Dame and Tatum Paxley. So, you know, the Rascals winning this match was really big. And, I, you know, I, I like this opportunity for them. Thousand and ten percent. Next, we saw a match between Aura Mensa and Lexus King. Lexus King was able to pick up the victory, which was I was kind of, you know, I was surprised about. But Lexus King, he's fallen off the map a little bit. He he did win this match. So right now he's still kind of, you know, he's still in the limelight as of right now. But, you know, a, a superstar from AEW. That you know was you know thinking greener pastures in terms of WWE. Sometimes there's just way too much talent, and it doesn't really. It's not an indictment on you know Alexis King or some of the uh, superstars that came from other promotions to WWE, uh, especially under the Triple H Paul Levesque era. I don't think he was you know kind of dealing with those Vince McMahon problems like how Vince McMahon wanted to uh, make sure all the other talent that was in WWE got buried. But I don't think that's how Triple H kind of do, uh, does things around uh, WWE anymore. So, you know, definitely, um, you know, have a, to be patient. Be patient. I feel like Lexus King will overall get a storyline pretty soon here. Um, you know, he made it personal, but he was able to steal the match. But, um, you know, Earl Mensa, metaphor, uh, metaphor is slowly declining. You know, Miss Jackson, Lash Legend, I think will eventually kind of steer off in their own. No, no, M. Dar the Supernova, which is um, kind of what Metaphor is all about. He's kind of that, you know, he's that crap talking guy who's going to get in your face, and he can back it up. You know, for being a small dude, No, M. Dar could definitely hold him to hold his own inside the squared circle in WWE NXT. So I feel like once when he comes back, maybe uh, you know Sean michaels will you know kind of put them more in like a better booking but as of right now i don't know did you seem kind of lost it just seem kind of lost next we have tatum paxley successfully win her match against rosemary which was shocking i thought rosemary was going to come in you know in a blaze of glory and just absolutely demolish tatum paxley but obviously that wasn't the you know that wasn't the case i kind of took it a little personal you know in terms of you know a wwe superstar once again beats tna and I, you know, I, you know, a lot of wrestling fans are thinking about this, especially when Wesley said it last week on NXT, how, you know, WWE superstars will always overtower uh, TNA uh, wrestlers. And um, I don't know, I just, I, you know, I was kind of hoping for Rosemary to pick up the victory, but I saw exactly why they did it. You're going to see, a, you know, probably a tag team match between Lyra Valkyria. Lyra Valkyria, by the way, you know, um, returned to WWE NXT. Um, it was great. Uh, you know, uh, Tana Paxley was able to find a familiar friend. Uh, Lyra, you know, she's back in NXT. And um, I don't know. It just it just goes to show, you know, once when you have them premiering on the CW October 1st, you know, they're going to need some top-end superstars. I feel like Lyra Valkyrie is running WWE. Is, after she, you know, came back to NXT last night, I, you know, I don't want to say it's over. I She was my heavily favorited favorite to win the WWE Women's Speed uh, Championship, which is which happens in the, today, the first round. But um, being on NXT, I feel like it's perfect for her. You saw Tana Paxley open her, you know, wide open arms, which I feel like overall will be really well for her. I feel like it's, it's going to do great. 
why not use the talent you have to kind of, uh, you know, promote a, um, a promotion like WWE NXT. And uh, I don't know, I maybe she has another run left in her. You know, I overall kind of have, you know, sus feelings that she's probably going to be the one to answer uh, Jordan Grace's uh, open challenge next week on NXT, which would be great for Lyra Valkyria. She came this close to winning the Queen of the Ring. She came, she was, she was very successful on Monday Night Raw. You know, uh, but now that you have this pure fusion collective, you know, they, you know, kind of squashed it, left, uh, you know, Lyra Valkyria and Selena Vega by their, by themselves. And then you have damage control. Most likely you're going to see Oscar return to kind of even the odds a little bit here. Maybe create like a three on three women's championship match would be pretty, I think it'd be pretty, that'd be pretty badass. I I would love that booking, but you know, Lyra Valkyria belongs in NXT. It's better than her going up to WWE and being kind of, shoved to the side like you saw you know like you see indy hartwell like you you know a lot like you you've seen shanna baszler and uh, you know if it if that's what it takes for her to be noticed because lyra valkyrie is very 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 amazing inside the ring and um yeah no only the sky, sky's the limit sky's the limit so definitely think she's gonna do great things in nxt once again then you saw Trick Williams and Pete Dunn finally get in the ring to fight each other. They've been fighting back and forth backstage. It got to the point where it was kind of like ridiculous when one of them was like, you know, hitting a promo and the other was like, eh, they start beating each other up. And like, I was like, all right, okay. You know, I'm, I'm getting this, uh, I'm getting this maybe like a CM Punk Drew McIntyre vibe a little bit here. Um, but overall, I feel like it was, um, sorry, there's my God, why does that mean? Sorry, I got sweat in my eye. Oh. Oh. All right, I'm alive. I'm alive. I think I'm alive. All right. Uh, but anyways, I you know, this match between Trick Williams and, um, you know, Pete Dunn, overall, I feel like it's a good booking. I do feel like it's a good booking, better than Drew McIntyre and CM Punk. Uh, but, you know, they, you know, and I did a double count out, and those these guys are still beating the hell out of each other. They're going to fight next week in the last man standing match. That should be pretty awesome. Next, we have Javon Evans defeating Joe Gallus. Big win. Big win for Javon Evans, you know, making it kind of like 1-1, one, one, one apiece in terms of their series fighting each other. Like, where you you know, kind of like on SmackDown where you've seen Andrade taking on um, Carmelo Hayes, a former, you know, NXT champion. Um, you know, Oba Femin defeated uh, Channing Stacks, Lorenzo. Jasmine Nix took, took an L against Jada Parker. Parker looked, uh, she actually looked kind of injured. You know, a couple of notes that I wrote down, I feel like Jada Parker was kind of nursing an injury. She was going a little slower than usual. And um, all in all, I just, um, you know, I respect and I love Jada Parker. I think she's great. Um, right now, Jasmine Nix, part of this fatal um, influence, Jasmine Nix, Fallon Henley. I, I love that Jada Parker challenged Roxanne Perez for the title. Kind of keeps her name imminent, a little prominent in terms of WWE NXT, although she did lose. One of those things where, like, even though you lose, you kind of win here. And Jada Parker, she's going to be forever seen as an NXT Women's Division main eventer because she was in that match, because she keeps getting dubs on the daily. And eventually she will be a champion. I, You know, I agree with that a thousand and ten percent. I kind of thought maybe, you know, her and Sol Ruka were going to be the ones to actually be the inaugural WWE NXT Women's North American Champion. Obviously, Kaylani Jordan won it, and, you know, she's doing a great job. She's doing a great job all in all, but, um, you know, kind of crazy. Lastly, on NXT, uh, you know, uh, Roxanne Perez was confronted by Julia. They're going to fight. They're going to fight on the first episode of NXT, Aaron on the CW, October 1st, for the WWE NXT Women's World Heavyweight Championship. So that should be, that should be great. I can't wait to see that. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be awesome. It kind of needs to be awesome. That show needs to be, you know, perfect as hell. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, hey, do not go anywhere. We're going to jump on into our AEW Dynamite preview. It's Wednesday. So once again, we talk about Tony Khan's promotion. You know, grab your favorite snack, grab your favorite ice cold beverage and join me here. So, hey, do not go anywhere. 